at sunrise. It's 459. Here are your morning headlines. Closing arguments are set for today in the Jeremy Christian trial. It's the last step before jurors decide his fate. He's accused of attacking three people, killing two of them on a Portland Max train in 2017. If he's convicted, Christian could get life in prison. A crash in the Hazeldell area of Clark County killed one person last night. This happened on Northeast 78th Avenue near Kingsway School. Deputies say a car pulled out of the school parking lot right in front of an oncoming truck. The driver of the car was killed. Three passengers in the car and the truck driver were hurt and went to the hospital. This is the third serious crash recently in this particular area. And talking a little sports now, the Portland Timbers are undefeated so far in the preseason. They're hoping to claim their fifth straight win at home tonight against Minnesota United. The game starts at 730. The regular season gets going on Sunday, March 1st. Those are your Wednesday headlines. Now, here's what's coming up on Sunrise. Rip City, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can add one more word to that phrase today. How about Rip City Day, baby? City Council will make that declaration today to honor the Trailblazers' 50th season of basketball. We're sharing your Trailblazers photos all morning here on Sunrise. And while the Blazers celebrate their past 50 years here in Portland, we're looking ahead to what the next 10 years might bring to the city. Our week-long look to the future continues this morning with the spotlight on Portland's <laughs> skyline. Taller buildings, Ay, that seems possible, right? How about landing pads on top of those Ooh. buildings for flying cars? Not <laughs> out of the question, Brenda Brexton. All right, lots to talk about. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this Wednesday. I just want to look ahead to maybe the afternoon because it is going to be spectacular. Rod Hill, I'm loving your forecast. Brenda, you know how I give you guidance at times, right? A little bit. Don't look past the morning because it's <laughs> going to be wonderfully clear as well. OK, here we go with the temperatures outside. Now it's a mix because yesterday the east wind started to blow. So when the air is moved a little bit by the wind, uh, temperatures don't get as cold. 40 in downtown, but 32 Hillsboro, 29 in Scapoo. So it's one of those mornings if you watch the temperature gauge on your car as you're driving in, you'll really see it fluctuate quite a bit. It will be perfectly clear. No fog today. 32 on average. We'll say out the door. Some areas warmer. 49 at lunchtime. Mid 50s this afternoon for that really nice day coming up. Back to you. Thank you, Rod. Republicans were a no show at last night's legislative session. The empty seats remind us of last summer's walkout over cap and trade, but Republicans say last night's boycott was not about that. Instead, they say it was an attempt to slow things down and they say they'll be back to work this morning. House Minority Leader Christine Drazen said because things move so quickly in a short session, this is an effort to set a pace that allows Oregonians and legislators an opportunity to engage in the legislative process. Democrats aren't buying that, though. House Majority Leader Barbara Smith Warner said in a statement, what House Republicans are doing tonight is not about protecting anything. It's not about process. It's not about pacing. It's about politics. We'll be watching to see if Republicans show up for work this morning and we'll certainly keep you updated. Want to know more about the proposed cap and trade bill and what it'll cost you? We have a breakdown on our website. Westland neighbors had a chance to speak out at the first city council meeting since news broke of a bogus racially motivated investigation by the Westland Police Department back in 2017. Tim Gordon is following up on that city council meeting for us this morning. Tim, we know there was a lot of anger in that room last night. Yeah, Drew, it was a very upset crowd that addressed the city council. At least one man calling them complicit. This happened a few years ago, but the city just settled a lawsuit over it. It was a full house at West Lynn City Hall, with community members wanting to know why members of its police department carried out a race-driven, bogus investigation. Your guys' credibility is shot. There were especially tense moments when one man took on city leaders. You're no better than the officers. You guys turn a blind eye and you guys should be ashamed of yourselves. I'm out. I'm done. The frustration is over what happened to Michael Fesser of Portland. Fesser was working at AMB Towing in Portland. He was concerned about racist behavior by co-workers. He turned to his boss for help. Fearing a lawsuit, the boss turned to his friend, Terry Timmius, who was West Lynn's police chief at the time. 
Court papers say Timmius ordered his officers to go to Portland and investigate Fesser for unfounded theft, leading to Fesser's wrongful arrest. As mayor of Wesleyan, I must apologize for the described conduct that has stained our community. The mayor and Westland's current police chief, Terry Kruger, are upset by the case, too. I will not tolerate racial or any other bias in policing. But that wasn't getting them off the hook last night. Rage was the first thing that I felt, disbelief. I'm shaking. I'm, I'm so upset. It disturbs me beyond comprehension. This is a black eye to the Westlin community. I think it will be a black eye for many years to come. The city settled Fesser's lawsuit for $600,000, but now there are several investigations starting up. Only one officer involved is still on the force and he is now on administrative leave. Drew? All right, Tim, thank you very much. This morning, we're also following up on a pair of tragic stories that happened up on Mount Hood the past few days. Two snowboarders died at Mount Hood Meadows, both were in the Moon Bowl area of Heather Canyon. Now that part of the mountain is really only for experienced skiers and snowboarders. The first accident happened over the weekend when 45 year old Ryan Zeitner fell. People could hear him yell as he slid down into open terrain. And then yesterday we also learned that another man, 47 year old Tim Bowders, died while snowboarding. Bowders was reported missing on Monday afternoon and rescuers found his body about four hours later. So he was in an area where we have some open water. In each of those open water areas, there's waterfalls back in there. And we rope off the entire thing leading up to it and the edges so you don't go in there. Uh, unfortunately, he was went underneath the rope line and accessed into that area. Over the past few days, Meadows also says the conditions on Heather Canyon have been safe and they don't plan on closing gates because of those accidents. Well, this is a sad reminder of just how bad flu season can get. A 16 year old student in Coos Bay died from the flu on Monday morning. The student at Marshfield High School caught the influenza B strain. It's been the more dominant strain this year and kids are more likely to catch it. Meanwhile, people are slowly being released from a cruise ship that's been docked in Japan. The passengers on that ship have been quarantined because of a coronavirus outbreak on board. And of course, we've been telling you about the Forest Grove couple who was among those passengers. According to an update on their Facebook page, the husband is still waiting to get off that ship, while his wife, who tested positive for coronavirus, is still in the hospital. Another couple from Oregon is coming home, though. They are Frank and Hope Hannum. They're from the Salem area. They've been quarantined at Travis Air Force Base in California since evacuating China. The couple was visiting Hope's family in China for the Lunar New Year. On the 21st, uh, we woke up in the morning and the government had locked down the entire province. The coronavirus started in the province where they were visiting, so no planes or trains were allowed in or out. Frank and Hope had, or Frank and Hope that is, had to stay in a house for two weeks with 15 of Hope's relatives. I'm sure they all got along just fine, right? They did finally get permission to leave the village and they were able to get on a U.S. evacuation flight. The couple and everyone else on board had to stay at the Air Force Base, though, for two more weeks while officials made sure they did not have the virus. Again, they are flying back home today. And today, Brenda Braxton, we can officially say it is Rip City Day here in Portland. <laughs> it's a day to honor the Blazers 50th anniversary season of basketball. Yeah, Mayor Ted Wheeler will make that proclamation official at a city council meeting today. Longtime Blazer announcer Bill Shonley coined that phrase Rip City. He made the call during a game on February 18th, 1971, when Jim Barnett hit a long shot. That's when Sean's blurted out Rip City. <laughs> You know, he said it's just organic. He didn't know where it came from, but it certainly did stick. In honor of Rip City Day, we're asking you to share your favorite Blazers photo. So we already have a couple great ones, including one from Sarah, who shared this throwback photo, <laughs> cheering on the Blazers in what she calls the 90s glory days. And then we have one more here from Amira. Share this one of her son's first Blazer game wearing a Nurkic jersey. Nice. <laughs> Keep sharing those Rip City pictures. Just use the hashtag KGW Sunrise. It's so crazy uh. to think something so iconic was just kind of an accident. Sean tells the yeah. story of the guys who were calling it with him going, hey, that was really good. You should right. keep that. We don't even know what it means, <laughs> but, but, but we it sounds like awesome. It. <laughs> well, I assume it's kind of like the, the rip through the, the nylon cord of the net, well, that right? That makes sense, but he never said that, right? Well, he never said that. He said, I have you no idea where it came from. 
thousand from. reasons what mm -hmm. it means, but he says there's really no meaning. It was divine. <laughs> it could have been a salute to the weather that day then. There you go. That's if my you transition. Make that transition. That's you have a, that ability. Sometimes the transitions are a little weak. I 